Today we're going to talk about how to install the TMC2209 in UART mode on the MakerBase or MKS Monster 8. So what I need to show you about this board is going to be a couple of things. First of all, we have eight steppers here and we can do UART on these steppers. We also have to be mindful of this jumper and that it's correctly set to the right place. And we also have to be aware of the jumper that we use right here for either USB power or direct power over here. The other thing we need to be aware of is actually the setting right here for the jumper for sensorless homing. So I'm gonna show you the actual stepper right now. So as you can see, this is the TMC22 09 version 2 and on this we need to know where the enable pin is which is located right here and those normally are connected to these corner pins that I'm referring to right here so if you were to look at the stepper you'd see that it's black on one side green on the other and then also has pins in the front so to set this up, what we'll have to do is basically, whoop, pardon me, we'll need to be aware of where we're gonna connect it. So in order to do that, we need to actually go over to the desktop of the computer. So let me bring you over there. So as you can see right here, we actually have the desktop for the computer and we have the website for GitHub for MakerBase, and here is the actual manual, and it's located in here. So there's some interesting things, such as the pinout diagram is located right here. It's called pin, and that's the same for each one of these folders. So the most current one is this, and what this tells us is about the actual steppers. So you see it's motor zero, and then it counts to, well, pardon me, not motor zero, driver zero, driver one, all the way up to driver seven. And notice how there's a two dash one and a two dash two. Over here, that's associated with a Z two. And then you have Z one below that. But we're gonna get into this a little bit later but we're gonna to check to see what the diag pins say over here, because these we have to set a jumper for sensorless homing. So as you can see over here, it's saying that zero is X minimum being the X minus sign. Then you have one, which is Y minimum, and then it's Z minimum, and then it counts up from there. And it says no change for the last two. Normally on your extruders, you will not need it. So if we go over to the actual manual, I've scrolled down to where the driver jumper settings are, and it wants you to be aware that you either need to set 3.3 volts or five volts. And in this case, it's recommended to set five volts, but it does say the old Marlin firmware, which Theoretically doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's okay. It may be an error in the manual, but I believe it's five volts. If not, we can change that later. But they pointed out right here, so you're aware. So we need to find our configuration, which is gonna be TMC2209 for UART and sensorless homing. So as we scroll down, we can see that the UART configuration is right here. So, Essentially, you see UART, and you can see the jumper setting right here. What they're talking about is the TMC2209 in this case, but keep in mind that the TMC2226 for UART has the exact same configuration. And the same is true for the TMC2208 and TMC2225. They're essentially the same in software at the moment. So if we go back over to the desktop, we can actually configure this. So
so on the desktop, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the jumper and set it for the Y configuration for that jumper configuration right here. Next, what we're going to do is actually place the jumper, or excuse me, the stepper in place. So we're going to align this and then apply a little bit of pressure. Normally, we would use heat fins to cool it. But because this is an example, I'm not going to use it so you can see what's going on. And we're also going to use a cooling fan, which I've set the jumper over here to 5 volts to match the fan. So I'm going to have to plug this in and we're going to have to check to see what pin that is actually on. The other last thing that we need to do is actually set the jumper for sensorless homing which will be right up in here. It should be the second set of pins and push that down. So we're all set for the Y axis doing sensorless homing. Currently I have it set to USB power so I can show you something, but it will power up and you'll hear a beep. So I'm gonna disconnect that for a moment. The fan apparently is running so I might not have it on the actual pins that are used to drive it. So it might be direct power. So let's go take a look and see what the setting is for that. So if we go back over to the desktop, what we'll do is we'll go over to the pins and we'll check to see how I have this set up. So apparently, as you can see right here, I have it set to five volts. The actual signal pins are on the other side. So we wanna set the actual fan pin and in this case, it's going to be PA0. So we're going to go back over to the board for a second, and we're going to correct that. So on the board, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract this, which might be a little bit of fun. And I'm going to pull this jumper right here, and I'm going to move it back to where it was. Now, the actual position in this case is 24 volts. So I'm gonna to have to move this out of the way. And I'm gonna pop the other pin out and move it to five volts. So that's gonna be right over here. And then I'm gonna plug this back in right here and move this back so you can see it. And now if we plug it in, it won't run automatically, hopefully. So we're good there. So I'm going to extract this. I'm going to pop out the actual SD card and I'm going to place this in the drive and then back into the computer. So you may hear a beep. Now I'm going to go back over to the desktop for a moment and I'm going to go to VS Code. I'm going to open the project that I've already downloaded, which is actually located right here and this is the current version I'm working with as of today. So inside VS Code I've already downloaded and extracted the file so I'm going to click on Explorer, open folder, then I'm going to go to my downloads folder, my Marlin folder, then my next Marlin folder, then select folder. Inside here we're going to have to set up the configuration so I'll click on the Marlin folder the source folder, the core folder, and then boards.h. Inside boards.h, I'm going to search on monster, hopefully. Apparently, I might be typing it, so let me do a control F again here. And here it is. So I'm going to copy all of this. I'm also going to check to make sure I didn't place it above which I didn't. So apparently this is where I typed it. So I'm just going to uh, ignore this and click on it for now. And I'm going to minimize the core and the source and go to configuration.h and I'm going to search on motherboard. So as you can see we have the ramps configuration we need to paste over. So I'm going to paste it right there. And I'm going to change the serial port right here to negative one. And that's the configuration just for the communication with the board. 
and the actual compile. So I'm going to search on A4988. And as you can see, we're now in the section for steppers. So we're working with the Y axis. So we need to find the TMC2209, copy that, and then paste it for the Y axis. Down here, we'll need to configure it. So in this case, it's this value for X, Y, Z. And then the other one is obviously your steppers for your extruders. There are special functionality that I'm not going to talk about right now for something else. And also, if you need to change the direction of your stepper because it's going the wrong direction, you can search on invert. And by doing this, you can actually set the direction to a different direction by changing a true to a false and a false to a true. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. So we're going to scroll back up to where we were for the actual steps per millimeter, which is way up here. So I'm going to search on A4988 to bring us back. And then scroll down a little so we're over here. Now I need to show you actually how this works with configuration advanced. So I'm going to search on 800 to get us in the neighborhood. So it might be a couple of enters. And what you'll see is the actual configuration for the Y axis. Now keep in mind that root mean square is a way to compute the actual turning for this. But we're going to stick with the defaults today. So what we do need to be concerned with, with this is this value is 16. It stands for 1 16th of a step. So that equates to this value over here being 80. So if we click over here and we want to increase the resolution, we can change this to 32. And then over here, we'll have to change this value right here for 80 to 1 60. If you want to increase the resolution further, you can go to like 64, and this will count all the way up to 1 256th of a step. But in this case, I'm just showing you a couple of examples. So 64 would mean this value would now be 320. So essentially things are doubling. So now that we have that set, we need to set up debug for now. So I'm going to search on TMC underscore debug. And we need to enable monitor driver status. So I'm going to hit the control shift to remove the comment. And then I'm going to find the second one, which is down here to enable the G code. So I'm going to hit control shift again to remove the comment. Then I'm going to go up and I'm going to search for sensorless homing. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about hybrid threshold or anything else about the stepper because I'm assuming that you'll look at the actual data sheet for that. But what we're interested in is sensorless homing right here. So to enable it, we'll hit Control Shift to actually set that up so it's enabled. And then for the value for this, this is actually set for spy communication for sensorless homing but in our case the optimal value for uart is one two five so that should be right in the middle for sensitivity you can adjust it depending upon your situation but i don't recommend it so now that that's set we do have to set up the controller fan or cooling fan so i'm going to search on controller fan and what we'll see here is that to cool the stepper drivers so we want to enable this functionality right here and then inside of here there's several things that you can use we're interested in the fan pin so the fan pin was what I was talking about over here where we actually looked at the diagram and we saw that it was PA0 so this is where we get into the actual interesting part here. I was talking about the steppers earlier. If we go to source, core, then we go to, whoop, not core, pardon me. 
we're going to go to pins. We're going to find our chipset, which is actually in this case STM32F4. And the reason we know that is because of, if we go to core boards.h, it says right here, STM32F4. So I'm going to minimize this for a second. Then I'm going to go back over and find this folder right here. And that's actually your MCU, by the way, as I changed the file by accident. So inside of here, we're actually going to have sub files. These files, we're going to have to find the monster eight, which is located right here. And as you can see, they talk about the actual pin numbers. So there's going to be in something in here for fans. So PA0, I believe, was the fan, but this one can be reallocated. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at the steppers for just a second. So as you can see, it's X, and this associates with what we were looking at over here. So this is the values of these pins and how they're associated. So we now know that for our actual setup. And each one of these will be a different stepper driver. So as you can see here, they actually tell you which ones you're working with. And they tell you what they're associated with. So if you have driver three, this is actually going to be your extruder. Currently it's not set up for dual Z, but you can change that by editing these files and shifting things down. But that's another subject for another day. So let's go back and try and find, what is it? PA0, let me check to see where that is. Yeah, PA0. So if we search in here for PA0, we can see that that's our fan two. That's what we're gonna use in this current case. So I'm actually gonna copy this and the pins file, by the way, is a database of pins for your particular hardware configuration because there's many different ones here. So if you were to look at the BTT Octopus, it would be a little bit confusing, but as you can see, there's the pro, and if you click on that, it points you to this file. This overwrites the settings in that file if they're different. So we have to go to the common. And inside common, you can see what they did with the actual pins. So here they have the instance of two Z steppers. And that's why it jumps to the next thing. But they also do the motor thing as well. So now that we know where that is, we have to go back to the advanced configuration. And for this pin, we need to remove the comment with control slash. Then we can backspace and paste our pin right there so it will automatically turn on. So you can see that there's other settings here that you can work with. So one of the ones that's most interesting, I mean, well, they're all interesting, but in this case, it's the speed of the fan. We can actually move this up and down from zero to 255. And then there's an idle speed that we can change if we so desire. But then there's extra time to keep fan running after you've disabled the motors. We're gonna crank this value down to five seconds, only for the use in this tutorial. 60 seconds would probably be optimal, but it's just so you can see what happens. So now that that's configured, we can go and set up our build. So what I need to do is actually minimize some of these folders. So let's take a second here. And we're gonna to have to go to platformio.ini and set our default environment. So this is based on an INI, and the associated INIs are actually pointed to in this file. So you can see them right here. So if we go over to here, and then we scroll down, we can see STM32F4. So we'll click on that, and then we'll search on Monster 8. Now we found the monster eight right here, so I'm gonna copy it. Then I'm gonna go back to platformio.ini and paste it over where the Mega 2560 was. 
Once that's complete, I normally do a clean and the rationale is this. Something is already contained in this file, so to clean it out, you just click like this. It's actually a different chipset. So to build, you would click the checkbox right here, and if you get a failure, press the checkbox a second time because sometimes things build out of order. In this case, it looks like it occurred where something may have built out of order. So we're gonna click the checkbox again, and hopefully this time it'll work. If it does not, find the very first error in red and correct it because every error thereafter is usually a cascade of errors. And so this may take a second to actually build. We can actually watch it in here. So you can see that this folder is starting to populate right here for the Monster 8. And so this will finish in a moment. And as you can see, they're starting to build things that it's using for the rest of the build. And then you'll have a firmware.elf, and then you'll have your actual build bin file right here. So to get this, what I do is I right click and then I do reveal in file explorer. So this came up on my other screen, so I'll bring it over here. And I want to show you the actual last good install, which was mksmonster8.cur. What this is, is actually capitalized so it doesn't reload the second time because the bin file is what it's looking for when it loads. So we're going to right click and we're going to send this to the USB drive. And so it's now over here. So if it sees this file, it will load it. And if successful, we'll rename it to this. But if you want to use this in multiple configurations, you can always rename it back to this and drop it on a different board. So what we're going to do now is go over to the actual desk and we're going to install it. So the reason I left this on the jumper for USB power is so we can actually do the load. So to do the load, I'm actually going to plug this in. This may take upwards of 30 seconds to actually load. So we'll give it that time to actually sort it out. So we're almost there probably. In a moment, we'll actually set the actual power up and we'll also configure the actual connection for the actual rail we're working for. So I'm going to connect that in a second, but I'm gonna move this jumper over to the right for direct power. So when we plug this in, it won't power the board anymore. So now I'm also gonna place this being the DuPont connector for the actual NEMA 17 stepper over in here into the port. So another way to reverse the direction on this type one is to actually rotate it 180 degrees in the other direction if you so choose or you can do it in firmware like I showed you a moment ago. So let me double check the configuration there. Now we're gonna actually do the connection for power. I'm running 24 volts of power, so I need to connect my connections. What I like to do is double check what I'm about to do. So we're gonna go back over to the desktop for a second just to verify this. So if we go over to here, we can see that positive is on top and negative is on the bottom. That's really relevant to actually setting this up correctly so you don't damage your board. So let's go back over to the workbench and connect that. So if you haven't noticed, this is gonna be actually voltage and I've marked the screw red so I'm aware of the actual connection I'm working with. Then I'm gonna connect this over here. Now the power is currently disconnected when I'm working on this because I don't wanna injure myself or see you do the wrong thing. So it's not plugged in. So let me loosen this a little bit, slide that in, tighten it down and put the safety hood back down. So here's the actual power 
let me uh, move this over so I can plug it in. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to go over to Pronerface in a second. So let me plug this in just to make sure it's okay. Everything looks okay. I'm going to plug this in right here so we can communicate with it. And then I'm going to go over to Pronterface. So let's bring this up. And as you can see in Pronterface, currently it says COM port 1. Sometimes it'll display in the dropdown, but a way to verify that is to go over to your desktop for a moment, type device manager, and then device manager should come up. And over in here, you're gonna go and check the COM port, which is COM port eight. So I'm gonna close that for a second. I'm gonna go over here and see if it's there. In this case, it is. If not, you could click on this backspace and then enter it in so now that we have that set up we'll go over and we'll look at the configuration when we connect so it does say that it's connecting and printer is now online so let's test the G code that we set up by typing M122 and pressing enter and as you can see it does say OK if it does say low, it generally means that you don't have direct power connected when you're doing this command. It may be on USB when that occurs. So now that we're set there, what we're going to do is test the actual Y axis. So I'm going to click here and it moves and then I'm going to click here and it moves. So let's test the actual homing for sensorless homing. So I'm going to click here and it's homing in the opposite direction I chose but you can see that it figured out that it was safe so you can reverse it in the firmware if you choose or flip the DuPont connector at this moment I want to thank everyone for taking the time to watch my tutorial and please like and subscribe and if possible please get vaccinated it will help you see the next tutorial, and be safe in your life. And for those that are my patrons or people that have been donating on PayPal, I'll play a thank you note at the very end of this tutorial. So everyone be safe, take care, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.